Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to be reviewing another issue of Nintendo Power, and uh, this time it's volume 24, which is another issue that I've never read before. But I'm looking forward to uh, breaking into this one and seeing what surprises lay in store. So, very odd cover by the way, we've got these weird kind of green hands holding a pair of binoculars, I'm not sure what the deal is there. We've got our super rad to the max 80s ad in the first couple pages. So we've got a new table of contents for this one, better structure for it. Um, it just looks much more streamlined. Now I want to note that this is May 1991. Nice table of contents, we've got a uh, very good player's pulse here. This is actually a pretty memorable player's pulse. This is one that I've uh, seen mentioned in a few places. We've got some artwork of the Mega Man bosses, uh, just artwork that uh, readers submitted. I like when they uh, spotlight the creativity of their readers. As is tradition, I'm going to read uh, one letter from player's pulse. And in this case, it is 15-year-old Josh Foreman. We should get a good look at 15-year-old Josh Foreman. Just, just take, a, take a real good look at that guy. Josh Foreman is 15 years old and lives in North Pole, Alaska, where Christmas decorations are up all year, and a 20-foot Santa Claus stands in front of the Santa Claus house. What the fuck are they? Sometimes the temperature drops to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Josh says that's when having Nintendo games to play is a great thing. Josh made these models mainly out of Cernit, which is a clay imported from Germany that hardens in the oven. He's made a business of selling custom jewelry and figurines. From the photos, you can see that he's been very busy. Josh homeschools with his brothers and sister, which means his mom is also his teacher. When Moose walk through the yard, his mom stops school and lets them watch. He is studying Japanese now so that he can someday talk with the Japanese staff at Nintendo Corporate Limited. Props to uh, Josh Foreman. No relation to George Foreman, although they, they do look very much alike, as you can see. That was actually a good letter. He seems like a creative kid. Got, got, some, got some cool uh, cool projects going on. All right, Vice Project Doom. I have never played this game, but it looks pretty awesome. It's a badass game. You go through a bunch of side-scrolling stages. You fight vaguely racist enemies like Kim Ron from China. He's a suspicious wizard from China who wears a pointy hat. So it's not racist at all. The M5 Scorpion, some kind of a machine. This actually looks like a pretty interesting game. I think I might might want to check this one out sometime on, you know, <coughs> emulator. It kind of reminds me of Ninja Guide and just the, the look of the, the bosses and whatnot. I've got the, this hanging man here. Bittersweet Victory, first Reese, now Christie. I had nothing to lose. And it's this picture of this guy driving down a, a stormy highway. Very serious game. They took Reese, and then they took Christy. God damn it. Very Ninja Gaiden-ish. It's got, it's got a storyline, it's got a plot, it's got characters, it's got cinematics. Looks like an interesting game. I, I would actually like to check it out sometime. Howard and Nestor in Get Out of Jail Free. Step one, be white. Step two, dress in a suit. The Rocketeer. I actually vaguely remember this movie from back in the day. I never watched it, but uh, I'm familiar with it. He's wearing poofy, he's wearing poofy Nazi pants. Not sure why. He's like a, a Nazi version of Iron Man. Not only does he wear poofy pants like a Nazi, he also rides in zeppelins, you know, blimps. You know who else rode in blimps? I'll tell you who else rode in blimps. Nazis. All right, Nintendo Power Awards for best graphics and sound. The winner is Mega Man 3. Best theme and fun, Super Mario 3. Best challenge, Castlevania 3. No surprise there. Best play control, Super Mario 3. Best hero, Mega Man. That's weird, I thought Mario would win that for sure. Best bad guy, the winner is Shredder. Overall best game for the NES, the winner is Super Mario Brothers 3. The Battletoads comics, wow. They're fighting a bunch of rat men. I didn't even know the Battletoads comics were ever a thing. I this is the first I've ever heard of them actually. This is really cool. 
can see here, uh, Ego Raptor really let himself go. Looks like the Battletoads were actually created when some, some nerds were exposed to radiation, which is a total ripoff of Ninja Turtle. How did how the Battletoads creators not get sued? No, I bet it was Konami. It was Konami again, the way they, they're always ripping off uh, cover art. I bet they I bet they ripped off Ninja Turtles too. I don't know how they didn't get sued for this. Anyway, the Battletoads comic is quite verbose, a lot of text here. Classified information gives us some, some passwords for Mega Man 3, which at this point in time, Mega Man 3 was the hot new game. A friend of mine had it, and we spent a lot of time playing it at his house. So I fondly remember uh, Mega Man 3 for that reason. And uh, here's a, a bit of nostalgia for you. Um, Disney's Tailspin for the NES. Special feature on the Game Boy. This was my first system. I think I mentioned that in another video. Oh, God. Artwork. Got more of this fun Nintendo Power artwork. Whew. This guy right here looks like a serial killer. And uh, these guys own Harley Quinn with him. They're getting ready to go and beat up some fools. Creepy little elf guy crouching in the background. Oh man, this artwork. Jeez. This is absolutely atrocious artwork. Look at, look at this. Look at how bad this is. So, we are 25 or so issues into Nintendo Power and they still can't do character artwork. They still can't hire an adult to uh, draw their characters. <laughs> Battle Unit Zeoff. This is a game that I really wanted when I was a kid. It just looked really cool. But it's just five stages. Back then, most games just had five or so stages, and we were happy with that. You could beat them in like one hour. And people would pay full price for these games, but it was the norm, so, you know, people were happy with that. But yeah, I really wanted this game when I was a kid. Never got it, which is a good thing because. When I eventually did have a, time, a chance to play it, I beat the game in like an hour, and I was like, well, this would not have lasted me long as a kid, for sure. Game Boy Top 10. The Game Boy has its own section now. We got the Game Boy Classified, Game Boy uh, Top 10, Game Boy Ratings. Lots of coverage of the adventure of Lolo here. Lolo looks a lot like the guy from Kirby, and he's got this, this lady with him, and that might be La 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 from Kirby. So, I mean, they look exactly like the bosses from, from Kirby's Dreamland. Yeah, they are. They're, this, uh, this game was made by Hal. Hal also made the Kirby series. So, wow. So, who knew? Who knew these guys had their own game before they came to the Kirby series? That's, that's kind of awesome, actually. Um, the things you discover when looking through these old issues. Uh, top 30 this month, Super Mario Brothers is leading the pack. Counselor's Corner is full of star tropics. So what do we got for Counselor Profiles this month? I'm just gonna pick one randomly. Uh, Jeff Norton, seems very, very folksy. Um, uh, greatest NES accomplishment, first Counselor to complete Dragon Warrior 2 and Earthbound. Earthbound? This is from like 1991. They must mean Earthbound for the NES, which was never released here. But wait, that would've been called Mother at the time. Why don't you guys take a look at this? This is like an enigma right here. Jeff Norton, if you're watching this video, first of all, like and subscribe. And second of all, let me know what the deal is with Earthbound, because I'm intrigued. We got some coverage here of Star Tropics. Absolutely excellent game. I love this part with the giant piano. It kind of reminds me of the... Uh, <laughs> That scene in, in the movie Big, where uh, Tom Hanks plays the giant piano, it's a, an awesome scene. And uh, we've also got some Castlevania 3. Very verbose issue, as you can see, there's just a ton of text in every section of this issue, especially compared to later issues. Just a lot of text, which I like, it's, it's uh, informative. And it, it's not like it's at the cost of losing screenshot space or anything like that. Look at all these screenshots that we've got. And uh, over here we've got Ultima Quest of the Avatar, which is a really, uh, really cool NES game, kind of, kind of an unsung RPG. 
And here we've got a very good tip on how to build attributes, which is extremely useful from the, the little bit of this game that I've played. I remember using this, this trick a little bit. Super R-Type. Ooh, got the Super NES on the way. Super NES Showcase. So it's about eight months away, but it's coming. And it's gonna be the greatest system of all time. Except for maybe the PlayStation 2. Um, and that's about it for issue 25. Not a whole lot here to talk about, not that interesting. Uh, the, the title game though looks pretty good and I think I'm actually going to play that sometime. So, um, other than that, not a whole lot to say about this issue. So, uh, like, subscribe, and have a good one. I kind of like how this guy is standing in the fire like Goldberg. He's just like, he's like proto-Goldberg. <laughs>